So let's just confirm that our compilation has successfully created a sum object in Gem5 named hello sum object. To do that, like Gem5 allows you to list the sum objects without having to run anything. Um, by the way, so only for compilation of Gem5, we're going to be running commands from the Gem5 directory. From now on, we're going to break out of the slides structure a little bit and put our configuration files in a different directory. This is like me trying to show you that you don't have to put everything in the Gem5 directory. Personally, I like to separate whatever is related to my research out like from the Gem5 directory and only put the stuff that is absolutely necessary in the Gem5 directory. So, and again, you can run the Gem5 binary from any directory. Like it's literally like a binary. So we can do just Gem5. So now I'm in the base. Uh, directory of my repository. So like in 2024, like build null gem5.opt. And like if you pass minus h, you get a help menu from gem5. And one of the options is minus minus list some objects. I'm going to copy and paste this if I can and pass it to gem5. Again, not running it from the gem5 directory. I'm running it from outside. OK, there's a lot of sim objects. Let's just grep for hello sim object there. And actually, I'm going to hello, search for hello. And this is case insensitive. So you can see that there are two sim objects. Like I mentioned, having that old sim object from the old tutorial there. But the one that we developed is hello sim object that is listed there. So all good. So we are confident that the hello sim object is there now. OK. So something, this is like more of a personal preference. Again, I mentioned I like to keep things out of the Gem5 directory just because it's massive. What I do usually is like I create um, a directory called components or scripts. So I'm just going to be calling it components since I'm going to start developing components in the standard library. I usually try to fit or develop whatever I do with my research with the standard library. So I'd like to call that directory components. Um, so I create a directory called components. You can create that directory. You name it whatever. Uh, does not have to be a specific name. So and again, like giving this a little bit more structure, I will create another directory inside of the components directory called hello dash sim object. So this does not have anything to do with what we're doing for the development of the sim object. It's just that ha it happens to have the same name. So again, you can, um, I can call it my R and be fine. So, And in there, again, for the structure of this tutorial, I'm going to just number the config scripts that I write. So I'm just going to call it first. Hello, sim example, or hello, first hello, sim object example. You'll see how I like very long names. Um, and I'm going to open that file if I can get to it. Oh, it was a folder. Sorry. I'll delete the folder. Yes. First, hello. Not py. So again, like another convention that I have personally is like names of files have underscores, names of directories have hyphens. So again, like this does not have to be a rule for you, but showing you examples of how I keep things structured. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do next is copy and paste everything from slide 32 into this file. And I'm going to explain it to you. You guys don't worry about it. We're skipping a few slides, so don't worry about it. So slide 32, everything into first hello sim object example. And if I can, please font size. Doesn't do anything. OK. 
Can everybody see this OK? Is there anyone who cannot see this? Cool. So let's go ahead and take a look at these codes. Um, so the first thing that we're, like, I want to mention here is that this is not following any standard library structure yet, just because our sim object is so simple that it's not worth the effort of going through and like, integrating it into the standard library. It just doesn't connect to any other sim object, doesn't do anything special. Let's just use the very old version of developing gem pipe scripts. So to do that, I need an interface from Python to C++. That's called M5. That's why I'm importing M5 there. So that's where I talk from Python to C++. That's the tool that I use to say, hey, Gem5, please start creating my sim objects, or hey, Gem5, start simulation. Then I'm going to import this thing called a root. So you're going to start describing your computer system as a tree. And the tree that describes your computer system in Gem5 starts with a specific object called the root. So everything in your computer system is a, a successor of root, if I'm using my graph terminology correctly. And then I'm also going to use HelloSim object, because I'm going to create an object of HelloSim object. For that, I need to import it from m5.objects.hellosim object. And from that, I'll import HelloSim object. So if you remember, when we were writing the scon script, there was a call to a sim object class where we defined hello sim object.py or past hello sim object, hello sim object.py as the first uh, input and then a list of sim objects there. So because of that, I can say m5.objects.hello sim object. Um, so kind of try to, trying to show the parallels. Then what I'm going to do is create a root object. So I'm create, creating a root object. Uh, I'm telling it that it's not a full system simulation because we're not going to simulate any operating system, anything. And then I'm going to add a child to root. So this is me adding a child to root called hello. Again, the name of the child, which is hello in lowercase, is not a keyword. Like, it's not like Gem5 expects the name of that uh, sim object to be hello. Jump forward works like this. I can call it my R and be fine. Actually, let me do it. And then I'm instantiating a hello sim object. Then the next call is to m5.instantiate. Like this is the first location in the code where Python and C meet. We're telling m5 to take this tree that is described uh, beginning with the root object and starts instantiating models in C++. It does quite a few things. We'll see what it does later. So don't worry about it for now. Assume that your sim objects are going to be created, i.e., the constructors that we looked at are going to be called. And then I'm going to call m5.simulate to start simulation. That also calls a bunch of functions under the hood from C++ to start simulation. Um, m5.simulate also returns an exit event that I can um, use to inspect into, simulate, like, into the reason of the simulation, uh, finishing, and all of that. OK, so what I'm going to do now, again, outside the gem5 directory, is going to run the simulation. So how do we run the simulations? We type gem5 build. <sighs> No, and gem5.opt. Now, if you remember, the path should be to your config script. So for me, it's under components, hello sim object, first hello sim object, example.py. OK, now I've run my first simulation with hello sim object. The thing that has happened as important, uh, and is important to look at is this. So if you remember, we had a standard out Printing hello sim hello for, from hello sim objects constructor and it's being printed. Nothing very special in terms of simulation, but we're getting there. Like we can see that things are starting to happen, and then you can see that simulation um, has ended like at tick zero because nothing has happened. Time hasn't moved. And 
And OK, so this is the end of like the first step in the first set of slide decks. If you want the completed version of the files, you can find them under materials, uh, 0, 03 developing Gen 5 models, 0, 01 some objects intro, step one. So everything that I developed so far should be there, barring a few maybe typos or like different names of variables. Like definitely your hello some object is called hello. Yes. OK, so I talked about looking into this later, and the later is now here. OK, so when you call m5.instantiate, you can find the definition of this function under source Python m5 simulate.py, I think. But if you go and ch uh, check out the definition of this function, you'll see that it calls two very specific functions called create CC objects and connect ports. So what you're doing while you call, when you call m5.instantiate is like telling uh, like gem5 to go ahead and basically call all the constructors of the sum objects that are in the tree described by the root. So it'll go through all the objects in the descendants of root. So for that iteration, or for for loop, objects are like at the Python level. And when you can call, when you call create CC objects, they create their C++ counterpart. And then the next step is going through all the objects again and connecting ports. So for example, when you connect the CPU dcache port to a dcache, this is when the ports are actually connected, meaning that, well, the equal signs in Python become like pointers being set in C++. Then another thing that m5.instantiate does is call this very specific function from some object. So the class some object in C++ has a virtual method called init. So in init, you can assume it's kind of like another constructor where you can initialize things, but you can guarantee that when init is called, all the some objects are constructed, all the ports are connected. So if you happen to like, want to do something with the ports, saying sending a request for the first time, doing some handshaking just because you want your simulation to work, not necessarily to simulate something, this is where you do it. And then like, you can find the definition of that function here. So if you go to source sim sim object.hh, you can see all these specific functions. Then Gen5, I, I think, well, J uh, Jason and Zantong talked about Gen5 being able to resume from checkpoints. There is another initiation step called init state and load state, where these two functions differentiate based on whether you're starting from a checkpoint or starting afresh. So after init is called, depending on whether you're using a checkpoint or you're starting simulation afresh, one of these functions are called. So init state is for the case when you're starting afresh, like you're not restoring a checkpoint, and load state is for when you're uh, restoring a checkpoint. You can see that by, again, looking at the code of m5.instantiate, and also there's counterparts to these in C++, as you can see here. So this is under the class sim object. if you go to source sim sim object.hh. So the other function that we called was m5.simulate. But we don't have to concern ourselves with it right now. We'll see later with uh, how simulate also calls specific functions from some object later on. OK, so now we're getting to a point where we can parameterize our very simple model. So again, our model is not doing very specific, specific things, but let's try to parameterize it anyway. OK, so parameters are like a way for you to configure your model, like have a generic behavior and specialize it. So what we're going to do is add a parameter to the hello some object that allows us to tell C++ from Python, I want you to print this specific hello statement this many times. So we're going to be changing the number of prints with very little effort, right? I need to just compile this model once in C++, and then when I change one number in Python, I can control the number of prints, right? 
I don't have to go back and compile again. Um, so to do this, what we're going to do is go back to our sim object declaration file. Is it clear to everyone what the sim object declaration file would be? Yes, no? Any facial feedback? Yes, thank you. Um, so I'm going to go to source bootcamp hello sim object.py. So parameters have a specific class uh, in gem5 uh, that kind of communicate again from Python to C++. They will eventually be translated into very simple things like integers, unsigned integers, like maybe characters, pointers, but they are classes in Gen5 or at the Python level. So what we're going to do is type in this. So don't type. Let's copy and paste. Uh, so I'm copy and pasting the first code block for um, slide 43. So the one that says from m5.params import star. So again, a little bit of um, advertising my personal preferences. I like to be very explicit. The only place that I'm not explicit with importing and uh, like variable names is this. Like when I'm trying to, well, not the only place, one of the few places. So when I'm trying to import stuff from m5.params, I just import everything. I don't import specifically because you'll see that when you're developing some objects, you're going to realize, oh, I need this another parameter, and you're soon going to be exhausting all the, the classes that are defined there. So let's just not put ourselves in that situation to begin with. So the next thing that I'm going to do is copy and paste the second code block, which call is the num hellos uh, line. So again, this is where gem 5 Python and Python Python differentiate. So if you wrote this in a Python class, it, like, this is kind of like an assignment, whereas in Gen5, it means something. You're kind of declaring that the hello sim object sim object has a parameter called num hellos. So because there is that statement, param.int on the right side, num hellos become a very specific keyword of your uh, sim object. Going back to it, what I'm doing here is that I'm telling the Gen5 that this sum object has a parameter called num hellos that is of type int. This is useful when it's trying to create that auto-generated structure. It knows that it has to basically def declare int num hellos under that struct. And this is the description that I'm giving for that parameter. It's useful for like readability and like for future reference. So number of times to say hello. OK, so the next step for us is to start using this um, in C++. So uh, what I'm going to do is go and put this print statement in a for loop. The for loop would be equivalent to the size of num hellos. So what I'm doing next is copy and pasting the first code block from slide 45. Okay. So make sure to copy and paste correctly. I had double things. So now that I have added that statement, num hellos equals param.int, I can um, assure myself that when gem5 is compiled, that params object is going to have an attribute called num underscore hellos. It's going to have the same name as the name that you give it at Python level. I'm just using it in the constructor of hello sim object. So is this clear to everyone what we're doing? OK. OK, so the next step is just to go ahead and recompile gem5. Um, is it clear why we need to recompile gem5 to everyone? 
So this is the only command that we're going to be running inside the gem5 directory, and it's the one to compile gem5. So I'm going to type scons build. Oh my god. No. OK, apparently. OK, again, I'm running with eight threads. I'm compiling null. Uh, we'll see, again, why we're compiling null. Basically, we're trying to save time. So while we're compiling, we can try to write a, like make the adequate changes in our configuration script. So for your reference, let's just copy and paste first hello example and name it second hello example so that like we don't forget the process of getting in like to this bit, to a step where we have um, a parameter called num hellos so i'm going to just copy and paste it and then make changes in second hello some object example so just created a copy of it going to rename it to be this is not second hello Now let's try look into changing or making the appropriate changes here. So again, I have the sim object, um, an object of hello sim object called my R, and now it has a parameter. One way to set that parameter is through like when I'm calling this hello sim object function. I can just say num hellos is equal to five. This will go ahead and like set that parameter, like initialize that parameter when it's passed to C plus plus. Does that make sense? The other way to do this would be to do this literally. I can say root dot my r. Yes, uh, all good. Equals five. Okay. So now let's go ahead and see our parameter at work. So we're gonna run the simulation again. Again, gem five build. No, jump 5opt and components, hello, some object, second. So now, if you try to, actually, before we run the second one, let's try to run the first one. So can anybody guess what will happen if we run the first script? Sorry, say that. Exactly. So jump 5 will complain that num hellos doesn't have a value. So one way to give it a value is through your configuration script. Another way to do that is through like, giving it a default. As I mentioned, like my personal preference is not to ever give it a de default. I, I try to avoid that as much as possible, but we're going to see how to give it a default as well. So again, because my some object now has a parameter called num hellos, Jump 5 is going to complain and say, hey, like, this parameter does not have a default value. You haven't given it a, default, a value. What am I supposed to do with this? Um, so now you can run, if you run second hello, because we initialized that parameter, it's going to print five times that statement. Now to see it at work, we're going to change that parameter to a different number. Um, let's make it three. And now prints three times. Isn't that awesome? OK. So since we're going to learn how to set a default value for a parameter, and again, um, my opinion is that it's best practice to not. But 
if we go look at the params, they have two types of constructors that you can use. So one of them is when you specify one argument, which is going to be assumed as a string. So the mandatory input is the string that is the description of the param. Another way to describe or instantiate a param is to pass two arguments, which will be the default value and then the description. So now if I go ahead and compile gem5, then run first hello example, I'm not going to get that error because gem5 will assume two for the default value of num hellos. So from now on, we're not going to touch this anymore. And then when we recompile, somebody remind me to run first hello example, and we'll see that it works. OK, so now this is the end of uh, the first slide deck. Um, you can find all the materials completed so far in materials 03 developing gem5 models, um, 01 some objects intro, step two. So we learned how to define or declare a new sim object, how to add parameters to it, and how to write a configuration file for that sim object. We also looked at the auto-generated parameter uh, header file that was created.